Blog Talk Radio. Hello, everyone. This is Chrisom, and I'd like to welcome you to a conversation about your Kundalini awakening experience. Right now, I am in uh, the country of Croatia, and uh, I'm broadcasting from the hotel that I've been staying at. And uh, so, I just want you to know from the outset here that uh, we may be interrupted by people. Um, the internet doesn't reach up into the into the actual private rooms, and so. I'm down here in a dining area, and uh, you might be able to hear some dishes rattling in the back, uh, and you'll probably hear footsteps and whatnot. And then, actually, people may come over and want to talk with me or (laughs) talk with each other, and, you know, that is as it is. I'm going to go ahead and and begin this broadcast uh, by welcoming you to... uh, uh, this broadcast from Croatia. This, we're on the island of Vis, V-I-S, in the Adriatic Sea. That's the largest island uh, from the, the city of Split on the uh, Croatian mainland. Uh, it's about 60 miles out into the Adriatic Sea, and it's about another uh, 100 miles to the Italian coastline, maybe a little less than 100 miles. And so we're really, really, really out in the middle of the Adriatic uh, and the Adriatic Sea. Uh, it's a very, very beautiful place. Uh, amazing coastlines. Amazing coastline. The, the inner areas are still a bit challenged uh, by the various activities that have taken place there uh, within the last two decades. Uh, one of them being the war, which which I'm sure many of you have heard about. Uh, <clears throat> I, I would like to welcome Amelia and Eileen and Rosemary and and those of you <coughs> excuse me those of you who have collected in the uh, in the chat room uh, in, in in this conversation uh, we're going to have uh, depending on the the amount of the, the noise excuse me. Right. <coughs> Thank you. Uh, depending on the uh, the noise levels, uh, I would like to talk with you about ego control and what an out of control ego on a societal level can do. One of the scenarios that can produce out of control ego responses uh, are challenges to a person's survival. So, or, or, or state of survival within your Kundalini equation, uh, the amount of, uh, of phenomena that are that may occur uh, with regards to to how you live your life or how your ego feels that it's being challenged within the Kundalini environment, uh, it can it can it can really be uh, uh, profound. It can be a very very profound uh, scenario. Matt, hello, hello. She goes, okay. Um, can you tell me the name of this hotel again? Tamaris. Tamaris. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, this is at the Tamaris Hotel in the in the in the on the island of Vis. Anyway, so. So as your ego uh, feels challenged within the Kundalini environment, and let's remember that that almost anything uh, within the the paradigm of the ego, uh, with an activated Kundalini or you know a person in the awakening process, is going to be amplified tremendously. I can't even put a number on it because that number will differentiate between each person. But it is amplified in a very profound way, and that puts that puts the the ego that puts the ego in a position of uh, feeling like it needs to fight for its life. And 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 uh, Amelia, can you come online? And if not Amelia, then maybe I'll try Eileen here. 
I'm online, Chris, and it's just very, very slow in its response. Hi, Eileen. Hi, Hi, Eileen. Hi, Hi, Eileen. Eileen, how's it coming? Can you hear it okay there? Yes, it's coming across very well. Ah, okay. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. I'll go ahead and put you in the blue, my dear. Thank you, Eileen. Okay, thank you. And and thank you, Amelia. Yeah, I just wanted to make sure that I wasn't talking to a blank screen here. <laughs> so thank you as well. Yep, no worries. You're coming across fine. And the sound in the background is actually not intrusive at all once you're speaking. So please don't worry about that, okay? Thank you. Thank you, my dear. All right. Okay, so, so as the ego begins to fight for its idea of, of existence... Uh, it can start to 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 move in areas that are really really difficult with regards to finding balance within the amplified environment that the Kundalini will create, and those imbalances can express themselves in many different ways. Uh, in some ways, you know, being here in, in Croatia. It is it is significant that you know that they just came out of a war that was basically started by egos um, expressing in an out of control environment, uh, and this would have taken place really back in World War II when uh, when one society allowed a a a faction of of itself of, of that society to to take control of the government and then to initiate. Uh, uh, disastrous protocols uh, on another country, and then uh, as as the years go by, forty years go by, that country that received those disastrous uh, uh, activities decided to return the favor, and uh, you know tit for tat, you know uh, uh, you know that whole scenario. This is the quality that an out-of-control, egocentric environment can create. And so, you know, you know, and we take it, you know, from the country aspect and we bring it down to a personal aspect. Uh, you yourself, uh, you know, the 17 trillion yous that, that comprise a, a typical human being, meaning all your cellular consciousness. Uh, it's... These types of activities can be taken against your friends, your families, perfect strangers, yourself, your pets. Uh, I mean, the list goes on. And and uh, so I'm going to really stress how important it is for you to begin to control how your ego is allowed to express itself within your kundalini equation. It's exceptionally important. I mean, just as as, as, as the conflagration that occurred between uh, Croatia and Serbia and Bosnia-Herzegovina and then all the other surrounding countries in, in this part of the world, uh, that was all set off by ego out of control. And I'm going to also suggest that within your Kundalini environment, it can also uh, set off different wars and and uh, animosities and, and, and extreme levels of anger or fear, uh, you know, that can really pollute a kundalini environment. So I, I want to really bring this across to you that, you know, you must control your ego. I'm not going to say kill it because you know how I feel about that. We don't kill that which is a part of us. We don't, you know, we're practicing ahimsa here, A H I M S A, which is Sanskrit for do no harm or do not kill. And so, you know, we're really training our our lower self, our you know, our our, our child self within us, to to learn how to do things in a way that is less violent, that is less volatile, that is, you know, it doesn't necessarily have to lack passion, you know, passion and, and, and you know, uh, a zest for life and things of that nature, but it does need to sit back and let the higher mental functioning self, the you, 
that is listening to this, in addition to the ego, that is listening to this broadcast, you, higher mental functioning self, need to take control of that little ego child, sit her or him down at the table and say, eat your food. <laughs> Don't talk while you eat your food. <laughs> So this is this is really what I w- w- want to discuss with you today about this. Uh, just as as you know, in World War II, 750,000 um, Serbs were were decimated just because they were Serbs, and then you know, you come around to the 1990s, and and this other war erupts here with the Serbs attacking everybody around them because of that. So can you? Uh, Attack or be attacked, or you know, set yourself up to to have a a war of of similar quality, say between yourself or your family or your friends. The first thing you need to really begin to understand is the value of self correction. You know, you're gonna you're gonna make mistakes. I mean, we are raised by our egos, basically. We are. We are given the ability to survive by the ego, and we are, we are, you know, in many ways our personalities are formed by by the way the ego is is related with within an environmental uh, uh, you know situation, all the way up to you know the social environment, the the scholastic environment, the familial or the family environment. These things all have a way of sculpting our ego. And our our higher self, our higher mental functioning self, at the same time. And so, as this occurs, and then boom, you know, the, the the Kundalini comes into the equation and just amps everything up, you know, tremendously. So, it's very important for you to begin to self-correct. Different societies have different moral structures. Okay, as, as I'm here in Croatia. Uh, when you're walking down the street in Croatia, well, first of all, the, 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 the Croatian population, they're, they're, they're very similar to, to the Germans in some way. Um, the men are really big. They're really tall. They're like, most of them are way over. They're like 6'3", six, 6'4". Six, you know, they're very big, very burly, and, and very much in that competitive, I'm a man type of zone. You know, and the women are, are complementary in the faction, you know, in, in their in their femininity. Uh, you don't necessarily make eye contact with these folks. They're not real smiley. Oh, let's shake your hand, eye contact. They like to keep their own space, as do the French. I've noticed that in France as well. Uh, and and so you need to be flexible enough to be able to read the environment that you're in, and and. When you're in a, an, an environment that your normal ego response would be, hey, how are you? You know, my name's Chris, da 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 da. Well, that's not necessarily respected by other cultures. And so different cultures will have different levels of what they term to be okay. And, and you know, that's easy to digest mentally, but it's a little different when you're out there in the middle of nowhere and you don't speak the language. And, uh, you know, you want to be friendly and you want to make, you know, you know, friends or whatnot. But you just have to be respectful of that culture. Uh, for the most part, I find the, the Croatian people to be a lovely people, a wonderful people. And they have a great, great, beautiful love of the ocean and, and of each other. And, you know, really, really nice folks. Um, as you can hear in, in the background here, very nice people. Uh, these are the night staff that, that you may be hearing in the background here. Anyway, so as as you come into challenges to your ego, oh oh, Amelia, also will you step in if you see if you hear the noise levels going out of control? Yeah, I would of course, because so far it's okay. I do that. Thank you. So as you as you feel within your kundalini equation, your ego start to to take control. And, and what this can feel like is your irritability levels can skyrocket. Your irritability issues skyrocket. Uh, excuse me, I'm taking off my jacket here. It's a little warm. Oh. Stand by. Okay, that's... <laughs> yes, ma'am. 
yes, yes. Yeah, that was a little bit um, loud there, Kristen, but it's okay, it's gone quiet again. <laughs> Thank you. So your irritability levels can can really uh, uh, skyrocket. Uh, what what may have never bothered you before can become an extreme level of anxiety now. Uh, you need to to take hold of yourself. You know, look at your irritability. Look at the levels of anxiety, and and pull back. From expressing yourself, say in a in a harsh or passionately angry um, level, and also make sure of you know I have to say this: if you're practicing the safeties, the safeties are at once they are a a, a standby moment. Just one moment, please. So yeah, I just spoke with uh, the lady there, and, and uh, anyway. First of all, I have to say this is a really nice hotel. Uh, the the hotel here and the ladies and the the gentlemen that are running the hotel are very nice, very considerate people. So I I just want to say that. And um, if you do come to Croatia, as many people in Europe are doing, uh, you come to this this motel because it's really the only one open in the off season. So there you have it. <laughs> um, as you are practicing the safeties, the safeties are at the same time an energetically generative practice as well as a stability practice. So at the same time that you're stabilizing and helping to stabilize yourself within the kundalini, you're also, through that stability and through that practice, you're allowing more energy to come in, more energy to come in, which uh, also brings to mind, I, I need you to to really back off of the caffeine. Seriously back off of the caffeine. Especially if you're within the first eight years of a kundalini awakening, back off of the caffeine and the artificial sugars. Seriously, folks, this, will, this can really screw it up for you. Uh, Caffeine has a tendency to hyper-express through the adrenals, and the adrenals will pump out more fight or flee hormone into the bloodstream, which will in turn cause the person to want to fight or flee. And, and, and part of the whole fighting process is becoming argumentative, becoming afraid, be, you know, responding to that fear in, say, a, a more uh, um, uh, difficult expression upon others, typically not on yourself, but more on, on the people outside of you. And, and, you know, that can have an extremely detrimental effect upon your family and your friends and, and perfect strangers who would otherwise be friends of yours, friends in the making. But, you know, because of the high levels of anxiety that your caffeine intake is helping you have, you'll never, you'll never have these people as friends. So really, back off of the caffeine as much as you can. You know, I mean, caffeine is 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 not your friend in this in this case. So as as the 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 ego feels compelled to lash out at people, uh, you need to pull it back. You need to rein it in. You put that tongue tip up behind your upper front teeth. Let your fingers go into the Gyan Mudra, which is, uh, you know, four fingertip to thumb tip on both sides. And I'm talking about the tips, not the pads of the fingers and the thumb. Okay. And let yourself manage the ego rather than letting the ego manage you. It's extremely important. You know, come, if you, if you, if you, if you live in the inner city or you can't get out, go out to a wild environment. If you, if you can find a way to get out to, to beautiful 
you know, island out here in the middle of the Adriatic, like, you know, the island of this in Croatia, then come out and do that. Uh, but really, 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 oh, by the way, I should say, in Croatia, you never, ever go barefoot into the ocean in Croatia because of the sea urchins. They will spear your feet. So you always need to, to wear uh, shoes or, they, they you know, plastic shoes, things of that nature, so that you're not, you know, endangering yourself. Um, but yeah, really, really begin to self-correct that ego. It can it can have an incredibly huge effect on the quality of your life and the and the quality of the people's lives who are around you. Please remember that during a uh, during a, a a Kundalini activity or awakening. Uh, you are like a broadcasting station. I mean, those people around you, they're feeling your thoughts. They may not hear your thoughts, but they're feeling your thoughts. They're feeling your anger. They're feeling your joy. They're feeling your bliss. They're feeling your anxiety or your fear. They're feeling these things, and it's very important for you to remember that especially when you're around the young ones, the children, the children who can, who are feeling it probably more so than the adults. <clears throat> so please remember that and, and do make your, your uh, internal corrections, your ego-based corrections. If you'd like to call in to the program, uh, the number is 347-934-0026. 347-934-0026. Uh, don't feel that you have to go along with this with this uh, topic. Uh, you know, I'll be happy to answer any of your questions about your Kundalini awakening process. Uh, so, you know, call that number up, and Amelia will answer the phone, and uh, you know, she'll get you all ready to hook you up to to me. Uh, Amelia, could you tell yes, me uh, how's the chat room developing? Well, we have some guests in the chat room. We have Julie and Prashti and Steve and Suka and then some guests with numbers. So no uh, questions. Julie, and Ju- uh, stand by a moment. Uh, hello, Julie, Fashti, Steve, and who was that? Suka. Suka. Su- Suka. Hello, hello. And thank you for joining us. Thank you for joining this, and uh, wish you were all here at the uh, at this hotel in uh, in Croatia. It'd be really fun to have a little party out here. I think It'd be nice to hear some uh, Kundalini people out here having a good time. <laughs> um, and then, and all of the guests who are there with numbers after you, I would like to welcome you, and I'd like to welcome. Uh, um, uh, all the people that are listening in the archives in the future. And as I mentioned last program, I would like you to spread this program around. I, you know, I don't really care about the notoriety, but I do care about the information getting out. Uh, and this is good information to get out. Boy, I tell you, when, you, when, you're, when you're in a country that has been so recently involved in such a devastating conflict... Uh, you can see the effect, the actual effect on the environment, just the plants and the animals of, of, uh, of, of such an out of control, uh, uh, ego society. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put a word out right now that many of you will not know, and it's called an, the, the word is egregore. Uh, E-G-R-E-G-O-R-E. And egregore is a consciousness that is created by many other consciousnesses that are within a similar thought stream or a similar attitude about life or, or a similar attitude about a, you know, whatever goal might be presented to those consciousness. That egregore becomes its own being in a way. And the, the egregore of of, uh, here we go, lights are going out. <laughs> and, the, and the egregore of a, of a society that is being ruled by the ego can be quite, quite strong. Uh, and because you're Kundalini awakened, you're, you, the, the egregore of your 17 trillion consciousness or cellular consciousness can also be quite strong. Uh, let's let's do our best not to go at war with ourselves or with our family, friends, or strangers. Let's do our best not to to 
to be ravaged by such a difficult situation. I I have a, a person that's been emailing me and you know, he he asked me for advice and I gave him advice and he didn't like the advice or his ego didn't like the advice and so he just kind of lit into me for a, a few uh, <laughs> few a few posts and uh, you know went into a, a litany about you know you know my my issues as a as a teacher of the Kundalini and whatnot and uh, you know the next. The next post I get, you know, he he sent it to me, and then plus all of his friends, and and basically the title of his note: Hi, hi everybody, you know, this is his name, and and I'm I think I'm going to commit suicide on Monday. I've got the uh, Nemetol tablets and whatever else, uh, another component that I forget, you know, and I know that he's not going to listen to me, but this is the kind of war that a person can have when they're not willing to accept the changes that the Kundalini brings to them, when they're not willing to stop the old life and begin to to embrace the new life. Now this person they they did very similar things that I did. You know, they tried to drown it in uh, you know, various uh, chemicals or various uh, ideologies and you know, it's just not going to work not going to work because kundalini will have its way with you no matter what and uh so this person is still within their suicide spiral at the moment and uh, you know certainly the prayers are going out to that person but this is the kind of thing that can occur when an ego is in a a terrible resistance to change a terrible resistance to change. And, you know, you expand it outward, you have a Croatian and Serbia. You know, you expand it to a societal level. But you don't have to go there. You really don't have to go there. You as an individual, as a Kundalini awakening individual, what I like to term a saint in training, you as a kundalini awakening individual, you need to be able to make the mature choice. You need to be able to take that inner child, sit them down, let them know that they are no longer uh, in charge, but that their uh, their input is appreciated when it's asked for. Seriously, do this. Don't hold back from that because it, it can have some, some fairly rough consequences if you do. Uh, let me see here. Yeah. Hi, Eileen. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. What do you think of this topic? How can you relate to this at all? Well, when you were talking about uh, egregore, if that's how you pronounce it, I was thinking in terms of... Um, the membership of the cast group forming uh, spiritual or positive egregore, is that also positive or possible? You Absolutely. You, you... Absolutely, Eileen. And, and, you know, your beautiful self has hit upon the, uh, you know, the, the action, the other action of the egregore can be of a very positive, helpful, and healing quality. So you're, you're, you're very, you're right on the mark, Eileen. And I noticed there was a post just recently of someone asking uh, for some information and for some help, and, and another member said, you might be receiving Shaktipat or energetics from the group, and so that would be the positive egregore in a Kundalini sense, at least in my mind. So, um, yes. I'm I'm enjoying your discussion. <laughs> <laughs> Put you on the spot, and I didn't did, I? <laughs> and yeah, you did. And I just looked up Viz and beautiful, just beautiful. Yeah, yeah. So I think it's pronounced I, Viz, V I S Viz. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, and it would be wonderful if we could all be there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'll have to make that. Well, thank you, Eileen. Thank you. Now, I'm going to put you back You're into welcome. listening mode here. Okay. 
and uh, coming over here to Her Holiness, Miss Rosemary. Hello, Rosemary. Hi. Good afternoon or evening. I'm sorry. Good. Actually, it's uh, 12:30 late. in the morning, but but thank you. Yes. How can you relate to this part of to this this aspect of our conversation? Well, it's very timely. There are some things in the relationship I have with my step family, but they're family to me next door. And uh, I was seeing my response to it as strength, and it is really for me strength to know where I stand on something and having to talk with them about it. But I could see the, the opportunity for being irate and really offended. Um, and I, I, I am happy to say I didn't go there, at least not yet. I haven't had the actual conversation with them, but it was, <laughs> I was pleased with an awareness that this work has given me. Hmm. Well, and very good, my dear. Yeah, go ahead. And I, 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 this is helpful because I will pay closer attention. I notice if something is upset about me that I'll, I'll, I'll pace, I'll be disorganized, I'm not settled, I can't, not getting work done. That is the kind of uneasiness like that. Um, and probably more of mine is like that. I'm, I'm not engaged in, a, in the workforce and I'm doing the work for the seminar coming up, but that's at a pace that's manageable so far. Um, but really well, no, good. No, it, it, pay it's attention. good. It's it, it, yeah. It's good for you to to kind of be in the middle of a situation that allows these these levels of anxiety and fear to be to be dealt with in a direct fashion. So yeah, this ties right in what we're talking about here and. And uh, do your best, do your best to stay balanced and to keep that ego under control. Okay. Mhm. All right, I'm going to put you. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. You know, saying I've I've run my life by that part of me for a long time, in a in a um, not a, a rough way of the ego but managing things and I've said on post a, a number of times that I I don't have a lot of destructive things around me or even um, even being panicked because I have managed my life to just ignore those things so that's, well that's I, I don't necessarily that. want I don't want you to ignore this uh, if you ignore it, you just kind of you put it on a back burner. I, I want you to to really work with it, and I want you to really begin to to look at the at the the deep internal foundations of the unease and the anxiety, and look look to where those qualities may be trying to distort or to uh, to come through in an amplified fashion. You know, with your Kundalini uh, activation. Okay. Yes. Okay. Now, Rosemary, I'm going to put you back in listening mode. I'm going to come on over and, and thank you, my dear. I'm going to come on over here to uh, Amelia Santara. Um, um, Amelia, how how has your Kundalini awakening equation responded to this subject? Um, well, Chris, I'm, I'm thinking about, you know, you were speaking about the environment, you know, that, that's there and that we all experience. And, you know, it can be very difficult in certain environments, external environments that are, you know, intruding and the internal environment and, you know, where ego is expressing strongly. And I was thinking, you know, in terms of the safeties, you know, and um, how I can change my, you know, make that internal correction become an external correction um, through the safeties. And, you know, the things like tolerance and patience and things like that are called for, for me when there's anxiety and fear and all of that. And the, the thing that I have found that covers those things is kindness. You know, to be, to, to be kind can actually bring a correction into my external environment and my internal at the same time. It's not that easy, actually, at times. 
um, you know, to do. Um, but it helps if I make that an action because it speaks directly to my irritability if I'm being kind. So I find, for me, um, to do some external action causes, it's to do with forgiveness as well because when that's going on, there's a level of intolerance that is, there's a forgiveness being called for. So I suppose one of the things that works for me, is like an umbrella act of kindness in the immediate, and and that's that's been very helpful for me. Um, well, I think that's that's a very good point, and and I agree, and I think that, uh, uh, kindness is an internal and external component of of, of the higher mental uh, functioning. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm getting an, an echo from you, Amelia. I'm gonna put you on the listening mode here. Okay. And uh, uh, it's definitely a strong quality. And, 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 you know, there's an old saying here that you give a healing and you get a healing. And, Amelia, you give a lot of healings. And uh, and I think that uh, the natural tendency to, to begin to insert kindness into a difficult situation is wonderful, wonderful quality of it's a wise action and it's uh, an effective action too. Uh, so yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So there now, if, if, if there are anybody who is listening live right now and you want to call in, go ahead and call in at three four seven nine three four zero zero two six. Each of these folks have uh, have brought up some excellent, excellent issues, and and I know that some of you out there are sharing some of the difficulties. Uh, that, uh, so, shall we say, an ego under stress of, of its own uh, uh, control over your life is having right now inside of the Kundalini. Uh, Amelia um, mentioned, you know, the effect on the external environment, and I want to talk a little bit more about the external environment that that is happening here in Croatia and in Bosnia. Uh, I think I'll be going to Bosnia later on this week. Uh, there is a lasting consequence to having an out-of-control ego uh, begin to assert its way within a kundalini awakening uh, uh, example. And just as there are one and a half million landmines that are laid secretly in the ground where nobody really knows here in this country. Uh, people have had their legs blown off here on the end of this. Uh, I think the last one occurred in 2005. Uh, but but it's happening, uh, you know, it's happening in, the, in other areas of the country here. Also in Bosnia, they have two and a half million. Uh, it's, it's a devastation of the ego. It's a devastation of anger and of fear, of offense and defense at the same time. And and it is the environment that takes the hit. The deer that step on it, the horse that steps on it, the cow that steps on it, the, you know, whatever animal that weighs, you know, similar to the weight of a human steps on a landmine, well, it gets blown up too, as do the, the you know, the, the people who don't know you know what what is occurring and now, now out here you know for the landmine areas that they know you know they they actually you know put a fence around it and they put a sign out there and it says you know a red death's head and and you know don't cross this well we don't have that availability within the kundalini awakening equation to put a red death's head over it and say don't talk to me now i'm having <laughs> i'm having a problem um we have to we have to solve the problem ourselves. We have to find our own inner landmines so that our external uh, uh, environment is not polluted by an internal uh, imbalance. It's very important, very important that you do this because you know these 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 things can flow just out of the blue. You know, and the person you're talking with or interacting with is going, my God, what the heck happened to that Christmas character? He's so involved. 
blissful. <laughs> you know, you know, maybe I won't uh, ask him out to uh, to a, the barbecue on Sunday or something like that. I mean, stuff like that can begin to affect your your outside social environment, and that can turn around and have an effect directly on your inner social environment. Because you know, you know, from a from a higher mental functioning self context, you know that you shouldn't be going off on people because they're not really part of the problem. The only problem that you're having is between your ego and the Kundalini awakening expansion that's happening within you. That's the issue that is really the cause of of your anxiety. And so it's not the person that you're talking with. And you really need to remember that. It's not the person, it's not your cat, not your dog, not your boss, not that stranger on the street, not the person that cuts you off on the highway. Okay? It's you, your ego, and your kundalini. And the balance that you need to find uh, within those components. Okay? So if any of you think I have an issue with your kundalini awakening uh, experience, Feel free to call this number, 347-934-0026. And I'll be glad to to help you as much as I may. Now, within the Kundalini Awakening experience, there's a possibility that you may have a, a tendency to remember some past life interactions that have occurred. And what this can this what what can happen here is then it's a propos to this subject here is what can happen is you may all of a sudden feel a terrible, terrible, terrible burden of guilt or sorrow or anxiety over an issue that that you're not really a part of in this life and yet there it is, you know, and, and it's weighing you down and your kundalini is amplifying your your, your sensitivity to it. I want you to remember to just forgive yourself no matter what. You must forgive yourself. We've all made mistakes, and this is how how we learn. This is how we evolve. This is how we're able to find our balance. We have to to explore one side of the equation on over to the other side of the equation as well. We have to, to some degree, we have to explore the polarities of... Of our of our human experience, and not just in this life life stream expression, but in other life stream expressions too. And so, when you have these these unfounded uh, levels of sorrow or guilt or anger or fear that has no foundation that you find in this life, go ahead and forgive it anyway. It's not going to hurt you, and it can, in, in many ways, it can greatly alleviate the situation. Uh, you know, this this world is a classroom for first developing a level of of um, of life expression that allows you to to approach exalted states of human divinity. You know, that's a great big statement. Uh, You know, and it's a fancy way of saying, you know, this world is a place where we have a, where we're in a classroom of evolution, of refinement towards spiritual evolution that gives us a, a, an expanded understanding of what it is to be in a body and, and embracing a, uh, a greater state of being, a greater state of awareness. Uh, so, you know, it's not the easiest thing. And we're going to make mistakes along the way. And some of those mistakes are going to be severe. And some of those uh, mistakes will have formed the karma that you're living or that you had to go through in your early child. And you may ask yourself, oh, my God, how, why did I have such a, you know, a horrible horrible childhood. I was molested. My parents were alcoholics and drug addicts and they committed suicide. And I was in a, you know, I mean, you know, I can just paint the, you know, a very terrible picture with it. Uh, 
And that is part of the checks and, and balancing of the system that we're in, of the spiritual evolutionary system that we're in. It's about uh, making the mistakes and balancing those mistakes, balancing the the tickets, so to speak. Okay, And certainly as a child, uh, children are where a lot of our karmas are played out because we're so helpless as children. You know, we depend on our parents. We depend on the adults around us. And uh, that is where a lot of our karma will take place. And so you need to forgive. You need to forgive yourself. And, 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 and you know, don't hang on to the, to the level of, of, uh, of, of hurt and disappointment that you may have uh, experienced as a child. Realize it, that this is karma. This is karma, okay? And, you know, it, it is definitely making you stronger. It is definitely helping you on your refinement path towards a greater spiritual evolution. That's what karma does. It's not there to punish. It's there to balance. And balance is what we want. We want that middle path. We can see one side on the left, one side on the right, but we're walking the path. We're walking the shisumna. We're walking the spinal cord as our kundalini is, is the vehicle that pushes us further and further and further into uh, the divine-made flesh or the flesh-made divine. Okay? Uh, if you have any questions or comments about this, feel free to call 347-934-0026. Wow, it got really quiet in here. It's so nice. Um, today at 5.30 in the morning, uh, I'll be taking a ferry back to Split. And uh, the name of this is actually Split, Banana Split. So it, it's there. Very beautiful, beautiful uh, area here Uh the water is amazing. The water has a quality of blue that is just amazing. Totally sacred male. Amazing stuff. Very kundalini. Very kundalini. Um, but as you go into their areas here, in, into these environments, you know, there are places you just cannot go. I think 14 or 15 counties have been closed due to uh, mindful uh, situations. And so don't let that happen to your interior environment. Don't let that happen. Begin to make corrective uh, uh, self-corrections on your ego and how the ego chooses to express itself within a kundalini awakening environment. And yeah, 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 you're going to be challenged. Wow, that was loud. <laughs> part, part, part of the whole thing is how you respond to those challenges. Really. How do you choose to respond to your uh, kundalini awakening induced ego challenges? And then what are you going to do? How do you self-correct? What uh, what mannerism do you choose to, to express through? Do you become angry? Do you become happy? Do you become, uh, you know, as... Or do you, do you try out, you know, do little mock performances in your mind of a of a of a of a hurtful situation, but at the same time, do you add in a corrective healing measure to that hurtful situation? If not for others, then at least for yourself. You don't need the anxiety that a Kundalini awakening can bring. It can bring pretty tremendous levels of anxiety, and frankly. Uh, unless you do need it, which and if you do need it, then you will experience it. But for the most part, uh, you can you can begin to make self corrections, and this is what the Kundalini wants you to do anyway. Okay, the Kundalini is a conscious, self aware force within you. It's following your progress. Uh, some of you. Some of you may even get uh, ec ec uh, physiologically expressive movements that will that will indicate that the Kundalini is listening to what you do and seeing what you do and 
and is in agreement or not with what you do. You'll you'll either have a uh, you know a great intuitive feeling about it, or it'll actually, in some cases, give you an actual thumbs up, or a minor crea, like a like a little spasm when when you're discussing things. I have one student that I'm traveling with right now, and uh, and we'll be talking about certain options that we have within within uh, uh, ethical and, and morality-based uh, uh, problems that, are, that that may arise within a person's kundalini awakening experience. And, and when the right moral and ethical response is being discussed, well, that person will get a kriya right there. A short little kriya, not a big honking, you know, on the floor, twisted up kriya. But just, a, you know, like a, you can just visually see the... Uh, the energy shoot up their spine out the top of their head. They have like a little, <laughs> a little mini uh, mini uh, spinal sweep. It's kind of cool to see. And and over the years, you can see that yeah yeah yeah, this is responding to very very high levels of moral self correction, ethical self correction. And so, do that for yourself. Take the time to feel and think about different moral situations that are coming up in your life. Uh, is somebody trying to cheat you out of money? Is somebody trying to cheat you out of land? Is somebody trying to cheat you out of an inheritance or out of a uh, something that's been bequeathed to you? Is somebody trying to... to uh, you know, move in on your on your uh, uh, relationship is you know is somebody trying to you know all of these different scenarios have moral and ethical implications and I'm you know I'm not going to give you a blanket generalized statement oh you just do this this and that well I mean I will I could give you what about say you know try to be as forgiving as you can but. Just because you're kundalini awakened doesn't mean you're a doormat. Okay, don't leave yourself open to to having those types of uh, energies uh, present themselves to you. You know, just because you're kundalini awakening doesn't mean you have to suffer. Certainly not at the hands of others who are you know who are in their own refinement process and maybe you know failing that certain classroom. Okay, so you can be forgiving and you can be strong at the same time, and you can say, "Hey, hey, hey, wait a wait a minute. This this is you know this is in the contract, and this you know this says that uh, such and such is is being given to to me, and this is this is something that I really feel is necessary for my happiness in this existence, or at least part of my happiness, and uh, and I'm going to have that, and I'm not going to let you take it." Okay, uh, I don't want you to feel that uh, that you just need to roll over and and let people walk all over you because that is absolutely not the case. Let's look at one of the uh, one of the top uh, animals that Kundalini comes as. There's two actually. Well, there's three. There's the serpent. You don't want to step on a serpent, and a Kundalini serpent can turn into a viper very very quickly. Okay, and the second one is a tiger. You know how many people are going to like argue with a tiger that doesn't have a chain around its neck? Okay, and the third is a spider. And let me tell you, just like the the serpent, you don't want to stick your finger in that spider's web. Certainly not the spider that that we saw over there at the uh, the uh, hill of the witch and with with Bruku. You know, he came in there and he saw <laughs> he found all the spiders. <laughs> Hats off to you, Bruku. So yeah, yeah, you're not a victim. And you can stand up for yourself and you can say, hey, you know, this you know, in all levels of fairness and all levels of grace, you can say, Hey, no, 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 no. This is mine and I'm going to use this uh the way my Kundalini helps me to do this. Now if your Kundalini says to you or gives you the inclination to say, Hey, 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 you know, you know, we're we're not talking about something that you really need within your activation uh, equation at this time, and uh, uh, don't worry about it. Well, then don't worry about it. Take that clue. Make that adjustment. Okay. Trust in your Kundalini, seriously, folks. Trust. 
in your kundalini. You know, I'm not a wealthy guy. I'm not a wealthy guy because I don't charge for these teachings. A lot of people uh, kind of uh, look at me quizzically like, what? You don't charge? for? How do you, how do you live? Um, well, you know, sometimes it's hard. Sometimes it's hard to do. Uh, but I trust in the Kundalini, and I trust in the Kundalini to help me give uh, a, a level of information and a level of security through that information to people that, you know, if they feel like donating, then then then, then they can do that. And there's no set donate, you know, there's no expected, what do they call that, a love offering? <laughs> <laughs> There's no expected love offering. There's just, you know, whatever you feel like doing. Um, so I trust the Kundalini and I'm going to I'm going to exhort you to also trust your Kundalini. Your Kundalini will help you. I'm not talking about entities now. Let's make a big difference between entities. Entities typically will only mimic ethical values, or moral values. They won't be able to exhibit them. They don't really chase them too hard. Uh, in many ways, entities are sent by the Kundalini in order for you to hone your own ethical and moral expressions. Uh, and, and as that occurs in those entities, well, you know, a lot of entity situations go within six weeks of, a, of an awakening or a spinal sweep. So, you know, they don't last forever. Okay, so really, really, really trust your Kundalini. It will help you. It doesn't mean that you don't pursue those things that the Kundalini may have arranged to have occur for you, like a bequeathment or a or or a uh, a relationship that is positive, th things of that nature. You know, you you can protect that which is is coming to you through the grace of the Kundalini. You can go out and get it without being, you know, overly egocentric about it. Okay, so understand that you are not a victim. You are not a victim. You're a hero. You're a superhero, if anything. Okay? Now, if you have any uh, questions about uh, that, you can call 347-934-0026. And I believe Amelia has some announcements she would like to make. Yes. First of all, Steve is just saying in the chat room there that he is enjoying it and what he's listening to sounds great. He's no questions and he's listening and learning. So thanks, Steve, hello, hello, for that. Hello, Steve. Steve, thank you. Thank you for writing. Nice to, nice to, um, uh, to hear from you. Go ahead. I, I would like to give the email or the website address where people can go if they would like to make a donation. Um, to the work that Chris and does and support that work. And the address is www.ascension-kundalini.blogspot.com. And on the upper right-hand corner, you will see a donate button. And when you press that, it's, it's easy to go from there. So the address again is wwwascension dash kundalini.blogspot.com and again as Krizan said earlier nothing is expected there is no set whatever it is that you would wish to donate yourself will be gratefully received if you're in a position to do that that is indeed wonderful I would like to also say that Rosemary's um, seminar is coming up in September and if we could just go over to Rosemary there and just ask her for some details about that, Chrism. And here she is. Hello, Rosemary. Thank you, Amelia. And it will be, as many of you know, the end of September 27th and 28th. And we have that venue set and pretty close to having a cost. And we have set also an early registration um, the end of July that would help people. We're making calls and, vis and, and uh, doing, uh, presenting the um, documentary film that we have. I won first one coming up on May 13th. So Eileen and I are working on getting things ready for that and what we can provide for people. And doing our best really right now to get things set up locally. And my uh, 
heart is really committed to that there be people, a lot of people here from the Twin Cities and neighboring states as well, so that there will be and Canada people here. And Canada, Canada yes, yeah. yeah. we do have. And Eileen, well, is there anything you? Is Sorry, there anything Lisa? you'd like to say, Eileen? Yes, I'm here. Um, I'm, I'm looking forward to the seminar. Um, I think Rosemary's doing a wonderful job. We have contacted, and she's actually physically going to places and, and putting out flyers. We have contacted many, many centers and agencies, and there seems to be a lot of interest. And that, to me, is really exciting. Um, and I'm, I'm very blessed to be working with Rosemary. And I look forward to meeting a lot of the members at the end of September. Well, thank you, Eileen. Yeah, I look forward to seeing all of you, you and Rosemary included, and, uh, you know, any of the members that, that we can, we can uh, uh, have come up. So thank you for your share in organizing that, Eileen. And... and and thank you, Rosemary, for your organizational efforts as well. What's Rosemary's address? If I'm listening, Rosemary, and I'm interested in getting more information, how can I go about doing that? Could you give us your email address? Thank you, Shirley. My email address is rosemaryg at usinternet.com. And just drop me an email, rosemaryg at usinternet.com, and I will answer your question and provide the information. Uh, and, and people have different questions, it's, and it's really kind of fun to be answering that and be part of people's process and know that that, that is being considered seriously. So let me know. Well, thank you, Rosemary. Thank you for bringing that out and, and for your organizational efforts and all of these things. And, and uh, you know, this... It's not often that you can come to an awakening seminar. I, uh, in the early part of my my experience, I had nobody, and you can you can. I mean, those of you who are Kundalini awakened right now, listening to this, you know how lonely it can be. You know how lost and lonely and 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 devastating it can be to your reality matrix. So when you come to these seminars, not only you know are you receiving information, but you're meeting other people. You're meeting other people, and you're making a network, and you're you're developing friendships, and and you know that can last the rest of your life. It's very very positive, beneficial place to uh, to experience uh, other people that are also going through the Kundalini awakening uh, experience. Uh, Wonderful, wonderful opportunity as we had and we experienced uh, Amelia and I in, in both New York and in uh, Newgrange, Ireland. Wonderful, wonderful people come to these to these seminars, and I will encourage you to to come and attend one. I'd like to also encourage you uh, for more information about your Kundalini awakening process aspects of it. Uh, go to Kundalini Awakening Systems One dot com. That's the number one dot com. Excuse me a moment. <coughs> I didn't bring my usual model of water here, so I'm suffering talking it's like a monologue for two hours. <laughs> but the Kundalini streams it. I would like you to go to uh, Kundalini Awakening Systems One dot com or on the YouTube network, just go to Chrisim Kundalini and you'll land on one of one of the uh, videos that I've done. So that's Chrisim Kundalini on the YouTube network. We're also on the Yahoo group, which is Kundalini Awakening Systems 1 at Yahoo Groups and Kundalini Healing at Yahoo Groups. And we also have a Tantra site that I'm, that I, you know, I'm not teaching so much Tantra these days, but it's still there, the Tantra site, Kundalini Awakening Systems 1 Tantra. Also on Facebook, we have uh, Kundalini Awakening Exclamation Point, and uh, that is a very, very active and very, very helpful group. We also have Kundalini Awakening Systems 2 on the Facebook network, and we have 
Kundalini Healing on Facebook networks as well. And uh, we have public and private groups on the uh, on the Facebook network. So if you'd like to visit us there, feel free to do that as well. And I would like to put out a thank you to to Amelia Centara and John O'Connor and their 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 six children and one dog and one cat and 324 for uh, for providing the the you know the revenue for this radio program to go out. We're we're over a year and a half old now, and we've been doing this pretty much once a week. I think we took a break during the New Year, Christmas type of thing, um, but we've been trying to do this every Wednesday at 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. And I just want to say thank you to Amelia Centara and John O'Connor for allowing this to to occur at all. So. So thank you both, Amelia and John. You guys are absolute saints, saints, kundalini saints all the way. I would also like to thank uh, uh, Glenn Ola for the creation and maintenance of the Kundalini Awakening Systems One.com website uh, that a lot uh, of people have had access to and have been able to uh, to help themselves within the kundalini uh, understandings that they're. Been, that they've been exposed to through his website. So thank you, Glenn. Uh, so just just a little bit of, of, of gratitude there, for, a lot of gratitude actually for, for various people that have done uh, these things to put this program together for you, listener, for you, okay? Uh, so as we as we continue with this conversation, make the necessary self-corrections. Do it immediately as you can. I'm not saying that you can't feel the anger or the remorse or the sadness or the anxiety if you want. And sometimes you don't really have much of a choice. It's a knee-jerk response. But once it occurs, make the correction and try try not to do it again. Do your best to change your ways. I don't care how old you are. I'm older than most of you listening to this. You can change your ways. I'm typically a, a kind of an outgoing person when I'm walking around in public. I don't have a problem meeting strangers, but here in Croatia, you know, they're not this, they're not positioned that way. Now, I, I did meet one guy on the ferry over here. He was very, very helpful, and I could tell that the Shakti had arranged this meeting, and so I could have just avoided it. I could have just walked away. And, you know, that thought flashed through my head. I just said, no, no, no. The Shakti's trying to tell me something here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look at this. And Madam, nice, nice man, very, very agreeable. You know, lived six months in Australia and then another six months here on the island of Vis in Croatia. And he told us all about the island. And he told us about, uh, you know, from a Croat. He's, he's, a, he's a native Croatian man. And, and uh, you know, he told us about all the difficulties that the Croatia has and, you know, the different things and places to see on the island and, you know, the blue cave to go visit when, the, you know, all of this stuff. Very, very helpful. And I was very happy that uh, that I took notice of his deep red luggage and it stopped me and I and, the, and it triggered in me a oh kundalini message got it okay all right now it wasn't just the color but the actual message itself that 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 came through as I saw the color and so we had a nice chat with him but I can change I can change how I am with people on purpose I cannot look them straight in the eye if they have if they see that as a challenge. Okay, I can I can help them be where they need to be at the time they need to be it. Right? So can you, as a Kundalini individual, you can really, really, really uh, begin to adjust, and in in whatever way you need to adjust in order to not. Uh, Overamp the people around you. Now your kundalini will turn itself up and down. I have no worries about that. And those people who need to be in a strong energetic radiance of your kundalini awakening uh, field, well, they will they will be in that radiance. So you know, no accidents there. Okay. 
But when you're in a foreign country or in just a you know a different part of the country that you live in where you don't know everybody, you know, and and maybe they have certain customs like I know in the southern part of the United States, you know, it's very different from California. Of course, the rest of the nation of the United States might say California is very different from the rest of the United States, which is probably true. But um you know, there, there are certain mannerisms and certain uh, considerations that we take in order to allow people to feel comfortable. And, and this is the type of thing that I will, I will uh, suggest you do unless your kundalini, you know, gives you the, uh, a reason to do otherwise. But make sure it's from your kundalini and not from your ego or from an entity that, that is, is couching itself as the kundalini, which sometimes does occur. Uh, if you have any questions about these or other topics with your Kundalini Awakening experience, the number is United States, 347-934-0026. Uh, my name is Chris, and right now I am broadcasting from Croatia, uh, the island of Vis in the middle of the Adriatic Ocean. Uh, so yeah, so give me a call if you have any questions about that. Uh, with regards to your inner environment, realize that that uh, you have certain buttons that normally it's your family knows how to push. And uh, you know, I, I certainly <laughs> I remember my early uh, Kundalini awakening experience. You, I couldn't even be around my family. Seriously. I, I excommunicated my family for two or three years. Just couldn't couldn't be around that. It was just too strong and, and everything else was just going so, in my opinion at the time, wrong <laughs> for me. I was I was really, really struggling with, with what was happening to me, why I felt a snake in my spine and literally something that was moving and wriggling, you know, boy, you talk about a uh, a long parasite there as it's like geez louise what is going on uh nobody to talk with nobody to talk to but you certainly didn't want to be around people that could push your emotional buttons and i'm not saying to you uh to, to us to or to excommunicate your family what i'm saying is that you have a lot more information just by virtue of this one program than i had in in years and years of a kundalini awakening experience okay you have in this one program a level of information that can really really save you and save your relationships with your family so take it and use it don't just let this be a you know a radio program that you go oh yeah okay well i agree with all that he said or i agree with some of what he said or i don't agree with anything that he said you know Take it and use it as best that you can within your Kundalini awakening equation. It's very important that you do this. It's very important that you take information that your Kundalini is sending to you and sending you to. Take that information and utilize it. Bring it into an active expression in your life in your kundalini awakening life make use of this in real time scenarios take it beyond listening uh, to this program on your computer or on the telephone however you're hearing it take it beyond that and for those of you in the archives the same message you know, as you, I, I'm talking to the future people, the people who are listening to this in the future. Take this information and utilize it. Your kundalini has brought you to it. It's just like a, a red suitcase for me. <laughs> Take this information and make it part of your Kundalini Awakening equation, and you will be so much happier for it, I promise you. You will be so blessed to have that level of information within your active expressing Kundalini Awakening uh, equation right now. Okay? Do this. Do this. And don't, don't think that you're not evolving inside your Kundalini Awakening experience. 
you know, some of you, some of you have awakened your kundalini through the uh, the practice of transcendental meditation. And some of you have done it for 30 years, and some of, some of you did it for 30 days. Either way, the kundalini awakened because of it. And it started you on a path of spiritual evolution in real time. TM, TM, I think, is a, is a, is a great uh, service that, uh, that the Maharishi gave into, uh, into the United States. And, and it may sound like I'm changing the subject, but I'm not. <laughs> Bear with me here. Uh, he gave this into the United States. And there's even a city right now called Fairfield, Iowa, that is really built up around the teachings of the Maharishi and the transcendental meditation people. Well, I have a lot of students come to me because they've awakened their kundalini through transcendental meditation, TM for short. Not saying that you have to have TM in order to awaken your kundalini. It's just the level of meditation. And and uh, if your kundalini is going to awaken within you, you can do any kind of meditation and it will happen. It will happen. Okay. But in addition to the TM uh, situation, I'm offering you a transcendental emotional, uh, uh, transcendental emotional meditation where you meditate on your emotions and you let them become balanced. You don't have to be angry. You don't have to feel lost or sad or abandoned because you're not. Yeah, yeah, there's not a lot of people around you right now that are having the same level of kundalini that you're having uh, or, or at all, you know, from an awakening perspective. But you're not lost. There are many, many other people like you having kundalini awakening right now in the very different degrees that they have it. Okay, Eileen, she'll have her kundalini expressed to her in one way, and Rosemary in her way, and Amelia in her way, and Chrisim in his way. You know, it's not the same for everybody. Okay, so your emotional involvement and the, the emotional excesses will not always be the same either. Sometimes we turn uh, the emotional anxiety against our own self. And I don't want you to. You don't need to go there. Okay. If you're hearing this um, this this program, uh, and you're in the middle of say turning uh, uh, your Kundalini awakening uh, experience into a level of guilt or a level of of uh, of, of self uh, uh, not defilement. That's the word that came, but but uh, uh, you know self hurt. If you have an inner dialogue with yourself to say, oh, gosh, you know, I'm just such a fool here. You know, I got these these weird spontaneous Korea type things, you know, and I'm a joke and I'm a clown. And you and you you walk around and, and you, you, you you couching it in a form of humor. You know, you 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 make jokes about yourself all the time. Don't do that either. Honor what is happening to you. Validate what is happening with you. Validate your kundalini experience to yourself and train that ego not to feel so strange about it. I mean, you know, that's a that's a tall order, I, I, I admit. But you don't have to advertise your you know your 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 feelings of of despair your feelings of self invalidation you don't have to advertise that you don't even have to have it okay you don't have to have it uh if you are you know having those types of expressions just make the self correction honor who it is you are honor your kundalini I'm not saying blow your horn or brag about it or, you know, you know, pound your fist against your chest saying, yeah, I'm going to be awakened. <laughs> I mean, you could do that if you want, but I'm suggesting you go a different route. Validate it. Do this first within yourself. 
that's really the only place you really need to do it. You don't need to externalize your self-validation. That will happen automatically. As you validate yourself internally and you you begin to make yourself corrections internally, that alone is a form of self-validation. Now, some of you... Uh, some of you may have awakened your kundalini doing uh, um, oh, uh, astral projection. Say a lot of astral projection, or what some folks like to call soul travel. You know, and this is a form of phenomenon. So you can become a little more addicted to phenomena than may be healthy for you. Self-correct. Realize that it's not all about phenomena. It's you know, you know, clearly one third of the the equation is about you know coming into balance within yourself with it not losing yourself to irritability or anxiety or fear or anger or sadness uh don't do that you don't need to go that way you practice those safeties at uh, kundalini awakening systems one dot com go to the go to the left hand menu it's the fifth uh item down on the menu there click on that and you know, read those, practice those daily as much as you can. And it will have a very, very positive effect on your Kundalini awakening experience. Make those self corrections. Don't get too addicted into the phenomena. You know, if you're astral projecting or soul traveling, you know, that's already a phenomena that is leading you towards the Kundalini. Okay? I was doing that before I, you know, had the awakening in this body. So, yeah, yeah, that's another way. That's like TM or, you know, any of the other, uh, you know, the five Tibetans, any any of the other uh, systems like yoga that can activate the kundalini. Well, you know, astral travel can do that too. Soul travel can do that. So could lucid dreaming, coming awake inside the dream. But make sure that, that if you start feeling past life, Issues, issues that really, you know, you have no idea where that's coming from. It doesn't relate to anything that you've experienced in your life. Because it's not of that life, this current life. It's from another one, a different one. Okay? Don't feel that 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 any aspect of your soul journey through this terrestrial life is... is, is bad or, 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 you know, don't have a negative judgment against it. We've all had to make, you know, hard choices in the many lives that we've had to come into the expression, to build up to the expression of a Kundalini awakening experience. Don't judge yourself because you're not that person anymore. That was another person. That person died. Okay, you're living some of that karma you right now. But you don't need to go through the pain anymore. And if the pain is coming up, then just forgive it. Let the kundalini cleanse that from your system. I do this. You know, I feel I, I'll, I'll feel like I was even before the show today. I was taking a, a, a quick nap because, like right now, it's one twenty-three in the morning here, and I wanted to make sure that I was somewhat awake, uh, you know, for this broadcast. And uh, and all of a sudden, I woke up with a jolt, and I was like, whoa, wow, what was that? I feel so horrible. That's, what a, and then I looked into it, and I said, oh, okay, okay, that's not, that's from another time. Got it. Forgiven. Forgiven. It is that easy. You can self-correct that easy. Okay? And everything that the Kundalini allows you to feel has a level of teaching involved with it. But sometimes the teaching is just having the self-correction occur. And if, if and if it's in if the the experience that you're having is in such a linear context, it can really you know you can really kind of see well you know a plus b equals c, and it's very easy to understand. Fine, fine. Then then uh, take that lesson because the Kundalini is bringing it to you right now. And forgive it. Take the information, apply it to your current situation. You know, like if you know, if you were a you know, a used car salesman in your past life and you were cheating people out of out of uh money, then make sure you don't do that. 
at all in any way, shape, or form in this life. You know, if that's the dream or the, the information that came to you, the intuition. Make that self-correction. And if you're getting it now, it may be a precognitive scenario too. So make sure that you make that self-correction and then recognize as as this opportunity comes to you, say, ah, yes, I made that self-correction. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to cheat that person out of money. I'm not going to do this or that that was, that was uh, something that was done in another life, a lack of ethics. Make that... Make that change. If you have anything that you'd like to talk about with, within your Kundalini Awakening experience, then call United States number 347-934-0026. And uh, Amelia will pick you up and she'll direct you on over to uh, to the broadcast booth here. So I am going to... Wait just a little bit here. I'll bring Amelia on, see if she has anything she would like to say about this. Hello, Amelia. Are you listening? Are you awake? Hello? I'm, <laughs> I'm riveted <laughs> to this talk person. Uh, no, seriously, I am. I am, you know, you know when I'm listening to you that I have various, um, you know, I get various, um, Phenomenon. experiences yeah while i'm listening now this 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 time listening to you they are speaking about um how important it is you know not to turn anxiety emotional anxiety against the self and how important it is that if we have past life guilt that you know we know are there but how important it is that we don't have this you know inner dialogue because i know i've had that and you, you taught me about that before, you know, about how not to do that and how not to invalidate the self and, and in other words, how to validate the self. And, you know, listening there to your conversation, I really want to thank you too because it's so important for people to have this information. I want to thank you for, for providing it, um, you know, from your own Kundalini experience and from your Kundalini. And, all the people that are here, you know, have been guided by their Kundalini. And for you to be doing this is so, so important. Um, so I want to thank you because you've been doing it every single Wednesday. And I just want to validate that, I suppose. <laughs> I, I'm very grateful for it, you know, as I'm sure everybody else who's listening is also. So thank you so much, Chrism. Thank you. Thank you, Amelia. Yeah. And, I just um, want to say as well, Chris Harris um, was in the in the room there for a little oh, while, Chris. but she's logged out again. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hello, Chris. She, Hello. Yeah. So Chris was with us in New York, and um, she actually just came in as you were speaking about the seminar, so I'd like to say hello to her as well. Chris is awesome. You know, she lives in New York. She, she is. She's an she awesome is. woman. So any of you New Yorkers, uh, uh, she's great. She's a great contact to have, and she's Fully in the awakening mode. So, uh, tip my hat to you, Chris. Hi, Chris. And Chris, am I wondering if I may ask? Are you have you done any videos? Will we be seeing that beautiful blue sea? I'm, I'm saying, ask your question again. What was that? Have you been able to do any videos? Will we be seeing that beautiful blue colored sea at any stage on YouTube? Well, no. I so. <laughs> I have. I, I, I haven't. Uh, I didn't okay. do any any videos in in France this time, and um, I plan on doing some videos along the Dalmatian coast. And uh, if we get up to Medjugorje there in Bosnia, uh, I plan on doing a video there, and uh, I plan on doing some videos at the. Uh, well, I'm gonna. I'm going to destroy this name. Uh, well, the really pretty lakes that they have in Croatia. Uh, we'll be leaving on the 5.30 a.m. ferry this morning. And uh, having having baptized ourselves in the cold Adriatic, it's cold right now, but <laughs> in the summer it's supposed to get, you know, down, or, you know, up to around 80 degrees. Uh, but right now I think it was around 58 degrees. But I liked it. My Kundalini liked it. Uh, my student had a bit of an issue with it, but they went in. <laughs> so, uh, 
So I went in, and I want to thank you for those swim goggles that, that we picked up at that used, uh, or that, uh, what do they call it, uh, Salvation Army type store. Uh, mm-hmm. They worked great, Amelia. They were the best ones out of the two that we got. So when I went into the Adriatic, I went down under the water and I was swimming. And they have schools of fish that swim not just like maybe two, three feet away from you. Very beautiful. They look like angelfish. Uh, oh, it was very, good. very beautiful. The color of the water is exceptionally clear. Exceptionally clear. And I must say that... Uh, the whole reason for coming to Vis, I didn't even know Vis existed a year ago. Had no idea. Uh, but the, uh, one, of, one of the students uh, had a Kundalini dream where they were told to go to the island of Vis in three separate dreams. This is a person that uh, is very much in contact with their Kundalini within the dream state. And uh, they contacted me <clears throat> and asked me if I would accompany them to Croatia. And uh, and uh, wow, wow, what a what an amazing! And this person had amazing experiences even before they even got in the water. Uh, but the, the the Kundalini wanted them to stay along the coast. Uh, we ventured inland. We ventured ventured into an area called Tito's Cave where. Uh, uh, Tito, the uh, the guy that held Yugoslavia together as a communist country, uh, uh, while he was while World War II was going on, he would hide out in this cave and he would broadcast uh, his instructions to 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 hold the Yugoslavia Federation together during World War II. And this is actually where one of the people lately got their legs blown off by a landmine, and so of course we weren't getting out of the car. And we drove all the way up to the military station up there. The the inland environment is not the nicest, but it's very interesting because so many different cultures have lived here. The the Greeks were here in about 500 BC. Uh, the Greeks were here, and then of course the the Carthaginians, and then the Romans, and then uh, you know moving on up to to modern day Croatia. Uh, there are piles of stones and archaeological things that you could go out and see if there were not landmines. But because there are landmines, you just don't even want to go off the pavement. Okay, because they haven't found them all. You know, they haven't found them all. And frankly, I wouldn't want any of my students or myself to accidentally find one. <laughs> so. Okay. It's, it's a very, very beautiful place. It's a very sacred male place. This is something that I'll, I'll share with you that happened to, uh, to me today. I was, uh, I asked the student to, to do a certain meditation to find out what, uh, what the Kundalini was asking of them to do with regards to, uh, going into the water, into the Adriatic. And, uh, as I was, as I was, we were sitting in a tourist office and I just kind of went into a little meditation myself and my eyes landed on the name of Vis, V-I-S. And then it just turned the letters around to S-I-V. And as some of you may know, uh, Shiva, which is the, the Sanskrit term for sacred male, is sometimes spelled S-I-V and pronounced Shiv. And, uh, and I got that, and I, all of a sudden I oh got it. Then the information flooded into me about the the sacred male qualities of this island and of its culture, the current culture that it's inhabiting this island, and how important this was uh, for the student. And the student also, when they looked at it, they saw they saw the sea turn red, red like the first chakra. And so it was really a, a not, not they weren't so much diving into the Adriatic as they were diving into their first chakra. And so it turned into a very, very powerful experience for both of us uh, going into the Adriatic, as cold as it was. And, you know, we found a place with as few sea urchins as possible. They really do cover the, you know, a lot of the, the sea floor. You don't want to, you don't want to stand up down there. It's, it's pretty spiny. 
but the water is exceptionally clear, exceptionally blue, and you'll see it as we go up the Dalmatian coast, and I do a, a few videos. I'm going to try to get into close proximity to the coast and, and to the water there and, and do some videos that way, uh, as well as the Plavice Lakes up there that uh, uh, some of you may have seen uh, pictures of. They're absolutely phenomenally gorgeous. They're a UN protected site, as is this the, this hotel that we're in. Is a, in the, the island of Vis is a, a quality of UN protection as well. Any of these islands in the Adriatic, and, and as some of you may know, in Florida you have an area called the 10,000 Islands. Well, they have the same thing here in the Adriatic, the 10,000 Islands of the Adriatic, and, and Vis is the, the biggest, most furthest island out from the Croatia mainland. Uh, really, from Vist, the next stop is the coast of Italy, about 80, 90 miles away. And uh, it's absolutely gorgeous here. Uh, for those of you who are in Europe, literally, if you in, from Dublin, you're about maybe three hours away. Uh, if, if you're in France or Germany or, you know, or England, you, if you're in France or Germany, you're really... If you if you drive to Switzerland and take off from Basel or Geneva, you're literally like an hour and a half away. That's I mean that's how fast the flight was. We took off from Basel, and uh, yeah, it's 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 really really I mean it's in the European backyard. European folks, I don't care if you're in Finland or England or Ireland or France or Spain, Portugal. I mean, this place is really worth a a visit, uh, and and uh, this is the Tamarin, I believe, the Tamarin Hotel. Uh, it's it's you go into the rooms and they're all in white. I really enjoyed this. They're, the curtains are white, the bed bed sheets are white, the blankets are white. Everything's white, and you open up the window and it opens out to this beautiful bay. Uh, that that has this, this this old ancient church right across the bay. You can see it very clearly, and the water is just phenomenal in its color of blue. And you can bet, I mean, I'll be doing my best to uh, to take uh, some videos uh, here. I couldn't really do it today because it was raining so hard. Uh, and on the day that it was sunny, we were on the ferry. We weren't even in Vis yet. By the time we got to Vis, it was dark. It takes two and a half hours to get back to the mainland via the ferry. So as soon as I have a, a, a good opportunity that I'm not getting rained on and the sun is out, you bet I will be taking some pictures of this water. Oh, thank you, Chris, and that would be wonderful. And thank you for that. I really enjoyed it. And what a blessing for your students, and, and, and that's fantastic. It was wonderful to hear. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. Well, sounds thank gorgeous. You. Sounds a beautiful, beautiful place. So. Yeah, uh, yeah. Rosemary, everybody had... Rosemary has a question for you, I think, Chris. Very, very good. Thank you. Hi, Chris. It's not a question so much as I'm so touched by all that you just said and the the whole human family that we are unless you sometimes have those experiences you don't have them but by your being where you are and sharing that it just truly touches me and enables me to feel far more connected to the human family which i really treasure thank you well Oh, you're you're very welcome, Rosemary. And it is really, it is a, we are a, a family of humanity. And slowly but surely, slowly but surely, uh, people are evolving. People are awakening more now uh, that we know of more now than any other other time uh, by virtue of the internet, by virtue of the expanded levels of communication that we have. Uh, I've been I've been to the to the state of ten thousand lakes where you're where you are at Rosemary and and it is indeed a beautiful area as well and you know you can go out and, and as I've had you done I, I mean I'll, I'll you know I've had you swim in the water right out there mm-hmm. yes and it's very you have some pristine beautiful clear lakes there and I've been to the headwaters of the Mississippi. Uh, uh, thanks to Eileen and, and the last seminar that we, we had there where we met your blessed self. 
And, you know, the headwaters of the Mississippi are beautiful, clean, and clear. And, uh, you know, very much like the waters that you see here off of the coast of, of the island of Vis. And, gosh, when you look at it, it's, I swear, you're just looking through a clear glass of water. Mm. It is so beautiful. It is so nice. It's quite salty, though. I mean, you get in there and you really... I mean, and, it, it, it leaves a residue on you, which I actually enjoyed. <laughs> but, but my student wanted to get it, you know, to wash themselves, and that's quite all right. But um, yeah, Rosemary, you you are also in a in a really really beautiful beautiful place, and I want to thank you uh, for setting up the seminar. I really look forward to meeting Steve there, and and anybody else that can make it up to to Minnesota at the end of September, the last weekend of September, please give Rosemary uh, 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 an email. And what's your email address again, Rosemary? It's rosemaryg at usinternet.com. Is that the letter G? The letter G for Goliath, my last name. Okay, so rosemaryg at... usinternet.com. Dot com. So Rosemary G at usinternet.com and and uh, thank you and and thank you to Eileen Laurel for for setting that up and I know that you can reach Eileen Laurel at at uh, e laurel55 at yahoo.com and uh and she also has information about your seminar as well, right Rosemary? Indeed. Okay. Well, thank you, thank you for 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 your statement and and for adding into this to this program. Um, I'm about ready to to end it here, unless uh, anybody else has a question. Anybody on the chat room have a question, Amelia? No, because nobody has a question. Everybody is still there. I think, like myself and Rosemary, rooted to the spot and thoroughly enjoying ourselves because it's been a very nice, it's been a really nice um, show, and it really has. So I want to thank you, and I, and everything that you said about, you know, how our old selves really are being replaced by the new emerging self from the Kundalini. And, <laughs> and to let that occur. Up and, yeah, yeah, let yeah, that occur. Let that occur, sure. yeah, yeah. And it's such a blessing, you know, to hear your voice and 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 Rosemary's and everybody's, and I'm feeling that that connection with everybody too. So thank you, and thank you to your students for bringing you to that place where you have shared with us as well. So thank you, everybody, and, and see you next and, week. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'll see. And, and is John listening? John is listening. He's in the other room. I Hi, tip John. my hat to you, John. <laughs> And 324 is happy? 324 is very happy. I was with 324 today after I came back from Cork, and we had a little chat. <laughs> and for everybody that's wondering, 324 is the standing stone that, that uh, John and Amelia have in their front yard. And, um, boy, is, is Ireland lucky with standing stones. Just amazing. Paleolithic monuments. Boy, I tell you, if I can do another uh, uh, seminar in in uh, Ireland and and work in those Paleolithic monuments like Noth and, and Newgrange, wow, it is so, so gorgeous of an effect on the Kundalini. Kundalini just loves it. Kundalini just loves yeah, it. Yeah, well, we... It does, and and quiz, and we will have another seminar in Ireland. So if anybody is listening in Europe and is interested in that, they can drop me a line um, to Kundalini Matters at gmail dot com, and there will be something happening next year, I'm sure, in Ireland again. I hope so. So um, note, it would be wonderful, quiz, and to include note, and just to tell you, I've been noticing more standing stones than I have previously, actually, in my journey between. <laughs> Between Cork and Kerry, there are quite a few ones I haven't noticed. So, um, in people's yeah, gardens and such, yeah, yeah. You are wealthy. You are wealthy with with uh, with with uh, a blast from the past like that. It's amazing, really amazing. Okay. One of these days, I, we should probably do a uh, uh, one of these radio broadcasts on Kundalini and Paleolithic uh, communications from the past. 
Well, what I would love to do, if, if it was at all possible, would be, and I'm saying this now, would be to have longer than a seminar or to have something where, you know, we could gather as community for, you know, maybe not a week, but a, a very long weekend and do a tour. And, um, you know, it would be like a could really retreat in motion, if you know what I mean. Um, oh, that'd be great. Not yeah, tourist, yeah. Not a touristy thing, you know, but that it would be like, you know, our, yeah, it would be, it, that's the way I would see it as being a Kundalini retreat, a Kundalini connection in motion, and we would go to different sites with you, um, because having done that with you, it has a very um, powerful effect upon upon the Kundalini, it has upon mine, and I know um, it would be, I would love to provide that opportunity for other people, so I'm going to think about the possibility of that. If anybody listening would be interested in that, contact me again at kundalini matters at gmail dot com and maybe I'll start thinking about that for twenty fifteen or sixteen Chris, um, if you that would be great. And, be, uh, yeah, I would I would be very interested in doing that. And also I'd like to shout out to Jake and Eleonora. A big thank you uh for for their friendship and, and hosting us there in New Jersey. And I'd also like to uh to shout out to Yvonne, otherwise known as Vonnie for allowing us to uh, to broadcast from her apartment in the city of Cork. So thank you to everyone who's who's really uh, you know gone out of their way to help us bring this information uh, to this audience. And once again, everybody, if you can email this show to wherever you know whatever network, Reddit or or any of these other areas. Um, Please do so. Let's let let's get this phenomena out here, or not? Let's get this this information out there so that so that people don't have to go through what this gentleman that I just described is, you know, contemplating suicide because he's unable to to find balance within his Kundalini awakening uh, process. Let's get this information out so that people can begin to really actively participate in their own levels of, of spiritual refinement within the Kundalini awakening uh, equation. Really, folks, try to spread this around. Spread this around. It's free. It's free for people. Let's, Thank let's, you, Chris. And, and, and I would just ahead. like to, to also send love and blessings to that man, you know, that you speak of. Um, and I think that what actually happens when people hear information like this is it opens up something for them that can make such a difference in their lives. So, yeah, yeah. 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 please do. Yeah. 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 All right, everybody. This is Chrisom and Amelia and all of you on the chat group and Eileen and Rosemary uh, signing off from Croatia. Uh, see you next week. You know what what is occurring and now, now out here you know for the landmine areas that they know you know they they actually you know put a fence around it and they put a sign out there and it says you know a red death's head and, and you know don't cross this well we don't have that availability within the kundalini awakening equation to put a red death's head over it and say don't talk to me now i'm having <laughs> i'm having a problem um we have to we have to solve the problem ourselves. We have to find our own inner landmines so that our external uh, uh, environment is not polluted by an internal uh, imbalance. It's very important, very important that you do this because you know these 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 things can flow just out of the blue. You know, and the person you're talking with or interacting with is going, my God, what the heck happened to that Christmas character? He's so volatile. <laughs> you know, I'm, you know, maybe I won't uh, ask him out to uh, to a, the barbecue on Sunday or something like that. I mean, stuff like that can begin to affect your your outside social environment, and that can turn around and have an effect directly on your inner social environment. 
because you know, you know, from a from a higher mental functioning self context, you know that you shouldn't be going off on people because they're not really part of the problem. The only problem that you're having is between your ego and the Kundalini awakening expansion that's happening within you. That's the issue that is really the cause of of your anxiety. And so it's not the person that you're talking with. And you really need to remember that. It's not the person, it's not your cat, not your dog, not your boss, not that stranger on the street, not the person that cuts you off on the highway. Okay? It's you, your ego, and your kundalini. And the balance that you need to find uh, within those components. Okay? So if any of you any kind of an issue with your kundalini awakening uh, experience, feel free to call this number, 347-934-0026. Um, and I'll be glad to, to help you as much as I may. Now, within the kundalini awakening experience, there's a possibility that you may have a, a tendency to remember some past life interactions that have occurred. And what this can this what what can happen here is and it's a propos to this subject here is what can happen is you may all of a sudden feel a terrible, terrible, terrible burden of guilt or sorrow or anxiety over an issue that that you're not really a part of in this life and yet there it is, you know, and, and it's weighing you down and your kundalini is amplifying your, your, your sensitivity to it, I want you to remember to just forgive yourself no matter what. You must forgive yourself. We've all made mistakes, and this is how, how we learn. This is how we evolve. This is how we, we're able to find our balance. We have, to, we have to explore one side of the equation on over to the other side of the equation as well. We have to... To some degree, we have to explore the polarities of of our of our human experience, and not just in this life life stream expression, but in other life stream expressions too. And so, when you have these these unfounded uh, levels of sorrow or guilt or anger or fear that has no foundation that you can find in this life. Go ahead and forgive it anyway. It's not going to hurt you, and it can, in in many ways, it can greatly alleviate the situation. Uh, you know, this this world is a classroom for first developing a level of of um, of life expression that allows you to to approach exalted states of human divinity. You know, that's a great big statement. Uh, you know, and it's a fancy way of saying, you know, this world is a place where we have a, where we're in a classroom of evolution, of refinement towards spiritual evolution that gives us a, a an expanded understanding of what it is to be in a body and and embracing a uh, a greater state of being, a greater state of awareness. Uh, so, you know, it's not the easiest thing. And we're going to make mistakes along the way. And some of those mistakes are going to be severe. And some of those uh, mistakes will have formed the karma that you're living or that you had to go through in your early childhood. And you may ask yourself, oh, my God, how, why did I have such a, you know, a horrible horrible childhood I was molested my parents were alcoholics and drug addicts and they committed suicide and I was in a you know I mean you know I can just paint the you know a very terrible picture with it uh, and that is part of the checks and, and balancing of the system that we're in of the spiritual evolutionary system that we're in it's about uh, making the mistakes and balancing those mistakes balancing the the ticket, so to speak, okay? And certainly as a child, uh, children are where a lot of our karmas are played out because we're so helpless as children. 
You know, we depend on our parents. We depend on the adults around us. And uh, that is where a lot of our karma will take place. And so you need to forgive. You need to forgive yourself. And, 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 and you know, don't hang on to the, to the level of, of, uh, of, of hurt and disappointment that you may have uh, experienced as a child. Realize it, that this is karma. This is karma, okay? And, you know, it, it is definitely making you stronger. It is definitely helping you on your refinement path towards a greater spiritual evolution. That's what karma does. It's not there to punish. It's there to balance. And balance is what we want. We want that middle path. We can see one side on the left, one side on the right, but we're walking the middle path. We're walking the shasumna. We're walking the spinal cord. As our kundalini is, is the vehicle that pushes us further and further and further into uh, the divine made flesh or the flesh made divine. Okay. Uh, if you have any questions or comments about this, feel free to call 347-934-0026. Wow, it got really quiet in here. It's so nice. Um, today at 5.30 in the morning, uh, I'll be taking a ferry back to Split. And uh, the name of this is actually Split, Banana Split. So it, it's there. Very beautiful, beautiful uh, area here Uh the water is amazing. The water has a quality of blue that is just amazing. Totally sacred male. Amazing stuff. Very kundalini. Very kundalini. Um, but as you go into their areas here, in, into these environments, you know, there are places you just cannot go. I think 14 or 15 counties have been closed due to uh, mindful uh, situations. And so don't let that happen to your interior environment. Don't let that happen. Begin to make corrective uh, uh, self-corrections on your ego and how the ego chooses to express itself within a kundalini awakening environment. And yeah, 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 you're going to be challenged. Wow, that was loud. <laughs> part, part, part of the whole thing is how you respond to those challenges. Really. How do you choose to respond to your uh, kundalini awakening induced ego challenges? And then what are you going to uh, for some information and for some help? And, and another member said you might be receiving Shaktipat or energetics from the group, and so that would be the positive egregore in a kundalini sense, at least in my mind. So, um, yes, I'm I'm enjoying your discussion here. <laughs> <laughs> Put you on the spot, and I didn't did, I? <laughs> and yeah, you did. And I just looked up Viz, and beautiful, just beautiful. Yeah, yeah, so I think it's pronounced Viz, V I S Viz. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, and it would be wonderful if we could all be there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'll have to make that. Well, thank you, Eileen. Thank you. I'm going to put you back You're in welcome. the listening mode here. Okay. And uh, coming over here to Her Holiness, Miss Rosemary. Hello, Rosemary. Hi. Good afternoon or evening. I'm sorry. Good. Actually, it's uh, 12:30 late. in the morning, but but thank you. Yes. How can you relate to this? part of to this this aspect of our conversation. Well, it's very timely. There are some things in the relationship I have with my step family, but they're family to me next door. And uh, I was seeing my response to it as strength, and it is really for me strength to know where I stand on something and having to talk with them about it. But I could see the the opportunity for being irate and really offended, um, and I, I I am happy to say I didn't go there at least not yet. I haven't had the actual conversation with them, but it was <laughs> I was pleased 
with an awareness that this work has given me. Hmm. Well, and, very good, my dear. Yeah, go ahead. And I, 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 this is helpful because I will pay closer attention. I notice if something is upset about me that I'll, I'll, I'll pace, I'll be disorganized, I'm not settled, I can't, not getting work done. That is the kind of uneasiness like that. Um, and probably more of mine is like that. I'm, I'm not engaged in, a, in the workforce, and I'm doing the work for the seminar coming up, but that's at a pace that's manageable so far. Um, but really well, no, good. No, it, it, it's good. It's it, it, yeah. It's good for you to to kind of be in the middle of a situation that allows these these levels of anxiety and fear to be to be dealt with in a direct fashion. So yeah, this ties right in to what we're talking about here. And and uh, do your best, do your best to stay balanced and to keep that ego under control. Okay. Mhm. All right, I'm going to put you. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Your so, thing. I've I've run my life by that part of me for a long time, in a in a um, not a, a rough sh- shod way of the ego, but managing things. And I've said on post a, a number of times that I I don't have a lot of destructive things around me, or even. Um, even being panicked because I have managed my life to just ignore those things. So that's, well, that's I, I don't necessarily that. want I don't want you to ignore this. Uh, if you ignore it, oh. you just kind of you put it on a back burner. I, I want you to to really work with it, and I want you to really begin to to look at the at the the deep internal foundations of the unease and the anxiety and look look to where those qualities may be trying to distort or to uh to come through in an amplified fashion you know with your kundalini uh activation okay yes okay now rosemary i'm going to put you back in listening mode i'm going to come on over and, and thank you my dear I'm going to come on over here to uh, Amelia Santara. Um, um, Amelia, how how has your Kundalini Awakening equation responded to this subject? Um, well, Chris, I'm, I'm thinking about, you know, you were speaking about the environment, you know, that, that's there and that we all experience. And, you know, it can be very difficult in certain environments, external environments, that are, you know, intruding and the internal environment and, you know, where ego is expressing strongly. And I was thinking, you know, in terms of the safeties, you know, and how I can change my, you know, make that internal correction become an external correction and through the safeties. And, you know, the things like tolerance and patience, and things like that are called for from me when there's anxiety and fear and all of that. And the, the thing that I have found that covers those things is kindness. You know, to be to to be kind can actually bring a correction into my external environment and my internal at the same time. It's not that easy actually at times, um, you know, to do. Um, but it helps if I make that an action because it speaks directly to my irritability if I'm being kind. So I find, for me, um, to do some external action causes... It's to do with forgiveness as well because when that's going on, there's a level of intolerance that is... There's a forgiveness being called for. So I suppose one of the things that works for me, is like an umbrella act of kindness in the immediate, and and that's that's been very helpful for me. Um, well, I think that's that's a very good point, and and I agree, and I think that, uh, uh, kindness is an internal and external component of of, of the higher mental uh, functioning. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm getting an, an 
echo from you, Amelia. I'm going to put you on the listening mode here. Okay. And uh, uh, it's definitely a strong quality. And, 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 you know, there's an old saying here that you give a healing and you get a healing. And, Amelia, you give a lot of healings. And uh, and I think that uh, the natural tendency to, to begin to insert kindness into a difficult situation is wonderful, wonderful quality. of It's a wise action, and it's uh, an effective action, too. Uh, so, yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So there, now, if, if, if there are anybody who is listening live right now and you want to call in, go ahead and call in at 347-934-0026. Uh, each of these folks have, uh, have brought up some excellent, excellent issues. And and I know that some of you out there are sharing some of the difficulties uh, that, uh, shall we say, an ego under stress of, of its own uh, uh, control over your life is having right now inside of the Kundalini. Uh, Amelia uh, mentioned, you know, the effect on the external environment, and I want to talk a little bit more about the external environment that that is happening here in Croatia and in Bosnia. Uh, I, I think I'll be going to Bosnia later on this week. Uh, there is a lasting consequence to having an out of control ego. Uh, begin to assert its way within a kundalini awakening uh, uh, example. And just as there are one and a half million landmines that are laid secretly in the ground where nobody really knows in this country, uh, people have had their legs blown off here on the end of this. Uh, I think the last one occurred in 2005. Uh, but but it's happening, uh, you know, it's happening in, the, in other areas of the country here. Also in Bosnia, they have two and a half million. Uh, it's, it's a devastation of the ego. It's a devastation of anger and of fear, of offense and defense at the same time. And, and it is the environment that takes the hit. The deer that step on it, the horse that steps on it, the cow that steps on it, the, you know, whatever animal that weighs, you know, similar to the weight of a human steps on a landmine, well, it gets blown up too. As do the, the, you know, the, the people who don't know in a way that is less violent, that is less volatile, that is, you know, doesn't necessarily have to like passion. You know, passion and, and, and you know, uh, a zest for life and things of that nature. But it does need to sit back and let the higher mental functioning self, the you that is listening to this, in addition to the ego, that is listening to this broadcast, you, higher mental functioning self, need to take control of that little ego child, sit her or him down at the table and say, eat your food. <laughs> Don't talk while you eat your food. <laughs> So this is this is really what I w want to discuss with you today about this. Uh, just as as you know, in World War II, 750,000 um, Serbs were were decimated just because they were Serbs, and then you know, you come around to the 1990s, and and this other uh, war erupts here with the Serbs attacking everybody around them because of that. So can you? Uh, Attack or be attacked, or you know, set yourself up to to have a a war of of similar quality, say between yourself or your family or your friends. The first thing you need to really begin to understand is the value of self correction. You know, you're gonna you're gonna make mistakes. I mean, we are raised by our egos, basically. We are. We are given the ability to survive by the ego, and we are, we are, you know, in many ways our personalities are formed by by the way the ego is is related with within an environmental uh, uh, you know situation, all the way up to you know the social environment, the the scholastic environment, the familial or the family environment. These things all have a way of sculpting our ego. 
and our, our higher self, our higher mental functioning self at the same time. And so as this occurs and then boom, you know, the, the, the kundalini comes into the equation and just amps everything up, you know, tremendously so. It's very important for you to begin to self-correct. Different societies have different moral structures. Okay, it's, it's, I'm here in Croatia. Uh, when you're walking down the street in Croatia, well, first of all, the, the, the Croatian population, they're, they're, they're very similar to, to the Germans in some way. Um, the men are really big. They're really tall. They're like... Most of them are way over there, like 6'3", six, 6'4". Six, you know, they're very big, very burly, and, and very much in that competitive, I'm a man type of zone. You know, and the women are, are complementary in the faction, you know, in, in, their, in their femininity. Uh, you don't necessarily make eye contact with these folks. They're not real smiley, oh, let's shake your hand, eye contact. They like to keep their own space, as do the French. I've noticed that in France as well. Uh, and, and so you need to be flexible enough to be able to read the environment that you're in. And and when you're in a, an, an environment that your normal ego response would be, hey, how are you? You know, my name's Chris, da, 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 da. Well, that's not necessarily respected by other cultures. And so different cultures will have different levels of what they term to be okay. And, and, you know, that's easy to digest mentally, but it's a little different when you're out there in the middle of nowhere and you don't speak the language and, uh, you know, you want to be friendly and you want to make, you know, you know, friends or whatnot. And, but you just have to be respectful of that culture. Uh, for the most part, I find the, the Croatian people to be a lovely people, a wonderful people, and they have a great, great, beautiful love of the ocean and, and of each other and, you know, really, really nice folks. Um, as you can hear in, in the background here, very nice people. Uh, these are the night staff that, that you may be hearing in the background here. Anyway, so as as you come into challenges to your ego, oh, oh, Amelia, also, will you step in if you see if you hear the noise levels going out of control? Yeah, I would of course, because so far it's okay. I do that. Thank you. So as you as you feel within your kundalini equation, your ego start to to take control, and, and what this can feel like is your irritability levels can skyrocket. Your irritability issues skyrocket. Uh, excuse me, taking off my jacket here. It's a little warm. Oh. Stand by. Okay, that's. <laughs> yes, Miss. Yes, yes. Yeah, that was a little bit um, loud there, Chrism, but it's okay. It's gone quiet again. <laughs> Thank you. Just so your irritability levels can can really uh, uh, skyrocket. Uh, what what may have never bothered you before can become an extreme level of anxiety now. Uh, you need to to take hold of yourself. You know, look at your irritability, look at the levels of anxiety, and and pull back from expressing yourself, say, in a in a harsh or passionately angry um, level. And also make sure, of, you know, I have to say this, if you're practicing the safeties, the safeties are at once, they are a, a, a standby moment. Just one moment, please. I just spoke with uh, the lady there, and, and uh, anyway, uh, first of all, I have to say this is a really nice hotel. 
uh, the, the hotel here and the ladies and the, the gentlemen that are running the hotel. They're very nice, very considerate people. So I, I just want to say that. And um, if you do come to Croatia, as many people in Europe are doing, uh, you come to this, this motel because it's really the only one open in the off season. So there you have it. <laughs> um, as you are practicing the safeties, the safeties are at the same time an energetically generative practice as well as a stability practice. So at the same time that you're stabilizing and helping to stabilize yourself within the Kundalini, you're also, through that stability and through that practice, you're allowing more energy to come in, more energy to come in, which uh, also brings to mind, I, I need you to, to really back off of the caffeine, seriously back off of the caffeine, especially if you're within the first eight years of a Kundalini awakening, back off of the caffeine and the artificial sugars, Seriously, folks, this will, this can really screw it up for you. Uh, caffeine has a tendency to hyper-express through the adrenals, and the adrenals will pump out more fight or flee hormone into the bloodstream, which will in turn cause the person to want to fight or flee. And, and, and part of the whole fighting process is becoming argumentative, becoming afraid, be, you know, responding to that fear in, say, a, a more... Uh, um, uh, difficult expression upon others, typically not on yourself, but more on, on the people outside of you. And, and, you know, that can have an extremely detrimental effect upon your family and your friends and, and perfect strangers who would otherwise be friends of yours, friends in the making. But, you know, because of the high levels of anxiety that your caffeine intake is helping you have, you'll never, you'll never have these people as friends. So really, back off of the caffeine as much as you can. You know, I mean, caffeine is, is, is not your friend in this, in this case. So as, as the, the, the ego feels compelled to lash out at people, uh, you need to pull it back. You need to rein it in. You put that tongue tip up. Love Talk Radio. Hello, everyone. This is Chrisom, and I'd like to welcome you to a conversation about your Kundalini Awakening experience. Right now, I am in uh, the country of Croatia, and uh, I'm broadcasting from the hotel that I've been staying at. And uh, so I just want you to know from the outset here that uh, we may be interrupted by people. Um, the Internet doesn't reach up into the into the actual private rooms, and so... I'm down here in a dining area, and uh, you might be able to hear some dishes rattling in the back, uh, and you'll probably hear footsteps and whatnot. And then, actually, people may come over and want to talk with me or <laughs> talk with each other, and, you know, that is as it is. I'm going to go ahead and, and, and begin this broadcast uh, by welcoming you to... Uh, uh, this broadcast from Croatia. This, we're on the island of Vis, V-I-S, in the Adriatic Sea. That's the largest island uh, from the, the city of Split on the uh, Croatian mainland. Uh, it's about 60 miles out into the Adriatic Sea, and it's about another uh, 100 miles to the Italian coastline, maybe a little less than 100 miles. And so we're really, really, really out in the middle of the Adriatic uh, and the Adriatic Sea. Uh, it's a very, very beautiful place. Uh, amazing coastlines. Amazing coastline. The, the inner areas are still a bit challenged uh, by the various activities that have taken place there uh, within the last two decades. Uh, one of them being the war, which, which I'm sure many of you have heard about. Uh, <clears throat> I, I would like to welcome Amelia and Eileen and Rosemary and and those of you <coughs> excuse me those of you who have collected in the uh, in the chat room uh, in, in in this conversation 
uh, we're going to have, uh, depending on the the amount of the, the noise. Excuse me. Sir. <coughs> Thank you. Uh, depending on the uh, the noise levels, uh, I would like to talk with you about ego control and what an out of control ego on a societal level can do. One of the scenarios that can produce out of control ego responses uh, are challenges to a person's survival. So or, or, or state of survival. Within your Kundalini equation, uh the amount of uh uh, phenomena that are that may occur uh, with regards to to how you live your life or how your ego feels that it's being challenged within the Kundalini environment. Uh, it can it can it can really be uh, uh, profound. It can be a very very profound uh, scenario. Matt, hello, hello. There <laughs> she goes. Okay. <laughs> Um, can you tell me the name of this hotel again? Tamaris. Tamaris. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, this is at the Tamaris Hotel in the in the in the on the island of Vis. Anyway, so so as your ego uh, feels challenged within the Kundalini environment, and let's remember that. Almost everything uh, within the the paradigm of the ego, uh, with an activated kundalini or you know a person in the awakening process, is going to be amplified tremendously. I can't even put a number on it because that number will differentiate between each person, but it is amplified in a very profound way, and that puts that puts the the ego. It puts the ego in a position of uh, feeling like it needs to fight for its life. And, and, and uh, Amelia, can you come online? And if not Amelia, then maybe I'll try Eileen here. I'm online, Chris, and it's just very, very slow in its response. Hi, Eileen. Hi, Hi, Amelia. Hi, Hi Eileen. Eileen, how's it yes. coming? Is it? Can you hear it okay there? Yes, it's coming across very well. Ah, okay. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. I'll go ahead and put you in the blue, my dear. Thank you, Eileen. Okay. And and thank you, Amelia. Yeah, I just wanted to make sure that I wasn't talking to a blank screen here. <laughs> so thank you as well. Yeah, no worries. You're coming across fine, and the sound in the background is actually not intrusive at all once you're speaking, so please don't worry about that, okay? Thank you. Thank you, my dear. All right. Okay, so so as the ego begins to fight for its idea of, of existence, uh, it can start to, to, to move in areas that are really, really difficult with regards to finding balance within the amplified environment that the kundalini will create. And those imbalances can express themselves in many different ways. Uh, in some ways, you know, being here in, in Croatia, it is, it is significant that, you know, that they just came out of a war that was basically started by egos um, expressing in an out of control environment, uh, and this would have taken place really back in World War II, when uh, when one society allowed a a a faction of of itself of, of that society to to take control of the government and then to initiate uh, uh, disastrous protocols uh, on another country. And then uh, as, as the years go by, 40 years go by, that country that received those disastrous uh, uh, activities 
decided to return the favor. And, uh, you know, tit for tat, you know, uh, uh, you know, that whole scenario. This is the quality that an out of control, egocentric environment can create. And so, you know, you know, and we take it, you know, from the country aspect and we bring it down to a personal aspect. Uh, you yourself, uh, you know, the 17 trillion yous that, that comprise a, a typical human being, meaning all your cellular consciousness. Uh, it's, these types of activities can be taken against your friends, your families, perfect strangers, yourself, your pets. Uh, I mean, the list goes on. And, and, uh, so I'm going to really stress how important it is for you to begin to control how your ego is allowed to express itself within your kundalini equation. It's exceptionally important. I mean, just as, 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 as the conflagration that occurred between uh, Croatia and Serbia and Bosnia-Herzegovina and then all the other surrounding countries in, in this part of the world, uh, that was all set off by ego out of control. And I'm going to also suggest that within your kundalini environment, it can also uh, set off different wars and, and uh, animosities and, and, and extreme levels of anger or fear, uh, you know, that can really pollute a kundalini environment. So I, I want to really bring this across to you that you know you must control your ego i'm not going to say kill it because you know how i feel about that we don't kill that which is a part of us we don't you know we're practicing ahimsa here a h i m s a which is sanskrit for do no harm or do not kill and so you know we're really training our our lower self our you know our our, our child self within us to to learn how to do things behind your upper front teeth, let your fingers go into the Gayan Mudra, which is uh, you know four fingertip to thumb tip on both sides, and I'm talking about the tips, not the pads of the fingers and the thumb. Okay, and let yourself manage the ego rather than letting the ego manage you. It's extremely important. You know, come if you if you if you if you live in the inner city or you can't get out, go out to a wild environment. If you if you can find a way to get out to to beautiful you know island out here in the middle of the Adriatic, like you know the island of this in Croatia, then come out and do that. Uh, but really, really, really. Oh, by the way, I should say in Croatia, you never ever go barefoot into the ocean in Croatia because of the sea urchins. They will spear your feet. So you always need to to wear uh, shoes or they, they you know plastic shoes things of that nature so that you're not you know endangering yourself. Um, but yeah, really, really begin to self correct that ego. It can it can have an incredibly huge effect on the quality of your life and the and the quality of the people's lives who are around you. Please remember that during a uh, during a, 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 a kundalini activity or awakening, uh, you are like a broadcasting station. I mean, those people around you, they're feeling your thoughts. They may not hear your thoughts, but they're feeling your thoughts. They're feeling your anger. They're feeling your joy. They're feeling your bliss. They're, they're feeling your anxiety or your fear. They're feeling these things, and it's very important for you to remember that especially when you're around the young ones, the children, the children who can, who are feeling it probably more so than the adults. <clears throat> so please remember that and, and do make your, your uh, internal corrections, your ego-based corrections. If you'd like to call in to the program, uh, the number is 347-934-0026. 347-934-0026. Uh, don't feel that you have to go along with this with this uh, topic. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll be happy to answer any of your questions about your Kundalini awakening process. Uh, so, you know, call that number up, and Amelia will answer the phone, and 
you know, she'll get you all ready to hook you up to to me. Uh, Amelia, could you tell yes, me uh, how's the chat room developing? Well, we have some guests in the chat room. We have Julie and Pashti and Steve and Suka, and then some guests with numbers. So no uh, questions. Julie, and Ju- uh, stand by a moment. Uh, hello, Julie, Fashi, Steve, and who was that? Suka. Suka. Su- Suka. Hello, hello. And thank you for joining us. Thank you for joining us. And uh wish you were all here at the uh, at this hotel in uh in Croatia. It'd be really fun to have a little party out here, I think. It'd be nice to hear some uh Kundalini people out there having a good time. <laughs> um, and then and all of the guests who are there with numbers after you, I would like to welcome you and I'd like to welcome uh um uh, uh, all the people that are listening in the archives in the future. And as I mentioned last program, I would like you to spread this program around. I, you know, I don't really care about the notoriety, but I do care about the information getting out. Uh, and this is good information to get out. Boy, I tell you, when you, when you're, when you're in a country that has been so recently involved in such a devastating conflict, uh, you can see the effect, the actual effect on the environment, just the plants and the animals of, 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 of such an out of control, uh, uh, ego society. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put a word out right now that many of you will not know, and it's called an, the, the word is egregore. Uh, E-G-R-E-G-O-R-E. And egregore is a consciousness that is created by many other consciousness that are within a similar thought stream or a similar attitude about life or, or a similar attitude about a, you know, whatever goal might be presented to those consciousness. That egregore becomes its own being in a way. And the, the egregore of of uh here we go, lights are going out. <laughs> and, and the egregore of a of a society that is being ruled by the ego can be quite, quite strong. Uh, and because your Kundalini awakened, your you the the egregore of your seventeen trillion consciousness or cellular consciousness can also be quite strong. Uh, let's let's do our best not to go at war with ourselves or with our family, friends, or strangers. Let's do our best not to 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 be ravaged by such a difficult situation. I I have a, a person that's been emailing me, and you know he he asked me for advice, and I gave him advice, and he didn't like the advice, or his ego didn't like the advice, and. So he just kind of lit into me for a, a few, uh, <laughs> few, a few posts, and uh, you know went into a, a litany about you know, you know my my issues as a as a teacher of the Kundalini and whatnot, and uh, you know the next the next post I get you know he he sends it to me and then plus all of his friends and and basically the title of his note hi hi everybody. You know, this is his name, and and I'm I think I'm going to commit suicide on Monday. I've got the uh, Nemetol tablets and whatever else, uh, another component that I forget. You know, and I know that he's not going to listen to me, but this is the kind of war that a person can have when they're not willing to accept the changes that the Kundalini brings to them, when they're not willing to. Stop the old life and begin to to embrace the new life. Now, this person they they did very similar things that I did. You know, they tried to drown it in uh, you know various uh, chemicals or various uh, ideologies, and you know it's just not going to work. It's not going to work because Kundalini will have its way with you no matter what. And uh, so this person is still within their suicide spiral at the moment. And, uh, you know, certainly the prayers are going out to that person. But this is the kind of thing that can occur when an ego is in 
a, a terrible resistance to change. A terrible resistance to change. And, you know, you expand it outward, you have a Croatia and a Serbia. You know, you expand it to a societal level. But you don't have to go there. You really don't have to go there. You as an individual, as a Kundalini awakening individual, what I like to term a saint in training. You as a Kundalini awakening individual, you need to be able to make the mature choice. You need to be able to take that inner child, sit them down, let them know that they are no longer uh, in charge, but that their, uh, their input is appreciated when it's asked for. Seriously, do this. Don't hold back from that because it, it can have some, some fairly rough consequences if you do. Uh, let me see here. Hi, Eileen. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. What do you think of this topic? How can you relate to this at all? Well, when you were talking about uh, egregore, if that's how you pronounce it, I was thinking in terms of um, the membership of the caste group forming uh, spiritual or positive egregore. Is that also positive or possible? You should, Absolutely. You, you, Absolutely, Eileen, and and you know, your beautiful self has hit upon the uh, you know the the action, the other action of the egregore can be of a very positive, helpful, and healing quality. So you're 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 very you're right on the mark, Eileen. Well, and I noticed there was a post just recently of someone asking. 